Hi you guys, I'm Amanda with Healthy House on the Block and I am here with another Healthy House tip to help you guys create an indoor environment that is as free from toxins as possible and one that supports your immune system and your overall health and wellness. This week I'm going to walk you through baby bedding. <laughs> now if you don't have kids or you don't have babies, don't like run off because there's actually some really useful information here when it comes to our fabrics. I actually learned a lot when I was researching this post. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that we have um, a sweet little eight month old at home. He was born with um, some medical needs that we didn't know about and so our um, life at home has been a bit of a roller coaster since we brought him home from the NICU, which he spent two months in. And when he came home, we were kind of relearning good ways to put him to sleep. Um, and so we went through, I couldn't even tell you how many swaddle blankets, sleep sacks, um, you name it, we tried it. And my one thing when I was buying these was I wanted something that was organic and something that was a natural fabric. I didn't want a synthetic fabric. I didn't want um, just any old cotton um, to be wrapped around his little body because with a baby who's in the NICU and a baby who has medical needs, um, for the, we had a feeding tube um, that was plastic that we used for the first probably four or five months of his life. And um, I wanted, I knew I couldn't control those toxins, so I wanted to control what I could. And that meant finding organic fabrics. Um, I, I knew I wanted organic, but I didn't really know like what the problem was with regular fabrics. So I started digging and doing some research and what I found was the fabrics that we use in our homes, um, and in this week I'm kind of tying it to your baby's bed, um, so sheets, swaddle sacks, blankets, pajamas, everything um, that is in the crib that helps our baby sleep. Um, what I found about these fabrics is there are a lot of toxins in them that are embedded in the fabrics. Um, things like pesticides from the growth of cotton, um, things like formaldehyde used as a preservative when they're shipping the fabric over so that it doesn't get mildewy. Um, there are toxins that are like microplastics in the fabrics that are not um, like 100% cotton, wool, linen, things that are man-made synthetic fabrics um, have microplastics in them. And so this week we're going to talk about all of these things and why um, if you have the ability to buy organic cotton um, or organic linen or a GOTS certified fabric for your child, um, whether it's their sheets, their bedding, um, a blanket, clothing, it's a good option. It's a great way to start cutting out toxins right away. Um, the toxins that sit on our skin um, sometimes can be actually more harmful because, you know, when we ingest toxins, our um, digestive enzymes actually kind of break down the toxin before it gets into our bloodstream, whereas toxins that are sitting on our skin um, don't have that opportunity. And so there's, um, it's a little bit different when we're talking about absorption of toxins that are sitting on our skin. I mean, our skin is our largest organ and it absorbs everything that comes in contact with it. And so keeping our um, babies in an environment that doesn't have you know, as many toxins is going to be the best thing for them. So I'm going to walk you through um, some slides. What it does is it breaks down this week's blog post in more of a video format. It's a little bit more digestible. If you're someone who likes to read the blog post, I would encourage you to click the link that I have in the description and head on over. Um, I have links to all of the studies. I have links to all of the products that we're going to talk about. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so let's take a look at some baby bedding essentials. Um, one of the things that I think is really important is not to get overwhelmed um, because I think that when it comes to our kids, as a mom, I understand that when you start reading facts, you start to get overwhelmed and worried. Um, but kids are resilient um, while we should still protect them. And so this really is just more for information for you um, when we are talking about preventing toxins in the home um, around our kids and babies. So let's take a look at the first um, thing. We're going to take a look at just the tech 
toxins that are in textiles and fabrics, I think this is really important to understand. Um, and so we're going to look at five different kind of groupings of them. So the first one is pesticides. Um, I recently did a post on pesticides and the harm that they do to our bodies, but specifically in terms of like clothing and textiles that sit on our skin, there's an even greater risk um, to absorbing these chemicals as opposed to just like being around them in the air outside. So pesticides have an extremely long half-life. This means that they stick around for a long period of time. Um, that's basically what they're designed to do. They're intended to produce protect plants from pests, whether it be like insects or fungus or bacteria that will ultimately kill the plant. So um, pesticides stay in cotton and fabrics that eventually get into our closets and homes and they're exposing our families and our kids to harmful chemicals. So some of the health effects that we see from pesticides are like leukemia, depression, anxiety. Um, it's been linked to Parkinson's disease. It's been linked to non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, and then there's an increased risk of asthma um, developing in kids and ADHD. So organic cotton not only protects yourself and your baby from unwanted pesticides, but um, it can alleviate actually some of those environmental issues that have arisen from the overuse of pesticides as well. So, so let's take a look at this next um, little category and we're gonna talk about um, just synthetic fabrics in general. Um, so synthetic fragrance, ugh, fragrance. <clears throat> so synthetic fabrics are made from a material that's usually just created by man. Um, many of these materials contain fine particles of plastics known as microplastics. Um, so we allow these toxins on our skin, but more importantly, we actually are breathing in the particles from the microplastics. Um, microplastics come from fabrics like polyester, nylon, um, and acrylic clothing. The reason that these fabrics are around is because they're generally just a lot less expensive to make um, than other materials and sometimes things like moisture wicking are more appealing to someone who's purchasing them. Um, the plastic fibers in the clothing don't break down and because of the minuscule size of the particles they can enter our airways quite easily and embed themselves deep into our lung tissue. Um, so this type of exposure can result in inflammation and damage to cells within the body. Um, it also is an environmental issue because the microplastics are everywhere in our water and our environment um, and so there we we want to keep those synthetic fa uh, fabrics off of our bodies if we can help it the next one we're gonna look at is formaldehyde so formaldehyde is a known carcinogen to humans um, it's usually another additive to textiles and clothing it's often added to ensure that fabrics have like a wrinkle free appearance and feel but it can also be added as like a preservative early on in the process to prevent mildew and mold while transporting fabrics from like another country. Um, Long-term effects of formaldehyde have been linked to increased risk of cancer, damage to the lungs and irritation to the airway, um, airways and your skin. In children and babies, it's much more serious um, because it often leads to developing asthma and dermatitis. I did a whole blog post um, that I have linked in this week's post as well um, about kind of doing a deep dive into formaldehyde if you are interested. And then this next grouping, we call it PFCs. Um, it's an additive to clothing and textiles to make them more resilient to stains and moisture. Um, PFCs are made to last and are often known as like a forever chemical, meaning that they basically last forever. Um, the chemical has been shown to impact human health by altering natural hormone product production, burning, burdening the immune system and causing birth defects. Um, it has also been linked to an increased risk of cancer as well as an increased risk in infertility. Um, so we want to find organic textiles to prevent those PFCs. And then the last thing I want to talk about is BT cotton. So this is a type of cotton that was created and gen genetically altered to be more resilient to pests, um, insects, fungus, while it's being grown. So because this type of plant is genetically modified, it actually produces toxins as it grows. Um, unfortunately, we actually have no idea if our cotton textiles are made from this pesticide um, treated cotton or naturally grown cotton or BT cotton. Um, it's safe to assume that most of our textiles probably are made with BT cotton. There's 
because there are over 70 million acres of it um, growing across the world and it's become quite commonplace to use. Um, so let's take a look at like how we can protect our babies um, when we're looking at kind of um, outfitting their crib and everything for bedding. So babies are resilient, but we are still in charge of protecting their bodies. So pound for pound, babies and children experience more chemical and toxin exposures than adults. Um, not only are they just smaller in size, but babies' rapidly developing systems are actually more vulnerable than an adult's developed body. And because children and babies are constantly developing, they have um, a more porous blood-brain barrier. So this immature barrier allows more chemical exposures to reach their developing brain. Um, and by protecting them at a young age from toxins, wherever we can, we're protecting their organs that can kind of become targeted by chemicals due to their lower levels of chemical binding proteins um, in their bodies. And like I said before, as a mom, I totally understand that these facts can be overwhelming. So try to use this information to help you make healthier decisions for your kids wherever you can. And that means cutting out to, uh, chemical toxins and pesticides from fabrics that sit on their skin is such a great place to get started. Um, and then we're also going to talk about some habits for a healthy sleep environment um, when we're looking at... Oops, we're looking at their uh so some healthy habits that we um want to really follow in the nursery is um first and foremost dusting so dust is not only made up of dead skin cells and dander gross um it's also made up of tiny particles from materials around our home our products and from dirt outside so all of these tiny particles can contain VOCs, formaldehyde, microplastics, pesticides, and we want to keep our baby's space free from all these toxins, especially because babies like to put hands and objects in their mouth, um, so they actually consume more house dust than any other age group. The second thing you can do in relation to dust is vacuum. Um, use like a HEPA filter vacuum. Um, don't forget like corners and hidden spaces. Um, really do a good job to get as much dust out as possible. Another thing you can do is move the baby monitor. Um, baby monitors, especially video monitors, emit electromagnetic frequencies that can interfere with um, baby's sleep and growth development. So while many will tell you to go without a monitor, I'm that mom actually that keeps the monitor for way too long. Um, myself and so a healthy option is to just move the monitor to the opposite side of the bedroom um, from your baby or you can use like a low emission baby monitor by um, a company like Beeb Care, which I or Babe Care, I um, have it linked in this week's blog post I'm super excited that um, this even exists and then the last thing you can do is climate control so the perfect temperature and humidity levels um, make it easy for baby to sleep it's also perfect for keeping babies um, environment in a range where um, it doesn't promote off-gassing. Um, so we want to keep the thermostat between like 68 and 72. We want to keep humidity levels right around 40%. Um, you can use a humidifier to raise the humidity, the humidity if you need um, or take a look at a post that I'm linking for some humidity reducing habits. All right, and so now let's take a look at some organic baby bedding options that I have on this week's um, post on the website. All right, so if we scroll down to um, the middle of the post, we've got a list that I went through and um, curated for you of essentials for your crib. Um, so first of all, talking about a mattress, we want organic, same with a mattress protector. Um, that can be kind of tricky to find, so I highly recommend this avocado um, organic mattress cover. And then um, baby sheets, you know, they're laying on it, their faces are on it. We wanna make sure that it's organic. Um, and I've got two options listed for you. Same with swaddles and blankets. Again, organic cotton, organic linen um, is your best option. Same with um, swaddle blankets, 
pods, um, swaddle sacks, sleep sacks, all of those. Um, want to try to get organic if possible. And I've got lots of options for you. Same with pajamas. I mean, this is sitting on our baby's skin. Um, and I've got some great options on the blog for some pajamas, um, Etsy picks for handmade blankets, uh, and you guys will be all set. Thank you so much for sticking around you guys and watching all of the slides and getting all of that good information um, that hopefully you can use at home. If you have any questions about organic fabrics, about toxins in fabrics, um, about any of the studies that I mentioned or any of the products, please leave a comment. You can also email me, which is um, the email address is on my website. So until next week, I hope that you guys are well.